This is a two-minute introduction to the audio-described version of Bake Mono, a film written, directed and produced by Tristan Nelson. The film is seven minutes long. Insight into the film states, A wealthy, successful man ponders on the smallest detail in a store, but to him it is everything. Which toy will suffice for his child? Returning home to prepare for the perfect opportunity that is presented to him, the man looks to the possibilities of the future, whilst concurrently tormented by his isolating past. As we learn from the film's creator, Bakemono, which is the Japanese word for monster, is a zero-dialogue narrative drama that follows a man with seemingly everything, attempting to retrieve his greatest loss, his son. The writer-director goes on to say that the short is inspired by his lack of relationship with his own father. The film takes place in a few everyday locations, a toy store, an apartment and a suburban residential street. The film's main character is known only as The Man. He is a middle-aged, East Asian man with a high forehead and neatly cut dark hair, worn in a side parting. He's clean-shaven, with dark, serious eyes beneath heavy eyebrows. Though his face remains sombre and serious for the most part, his eyes and mouth occasionally give away a sense of deeper emotions. There is a brief appearance by a second character, known as the Sun. A younger man of East Asian heritage, he has dark, side-parted hair with a longish fringe, swept to the side, and a dark goatee. Pink and white text on black. A love cabin film. In a toy store, teddy bears sporting red and white bow ties are lined up on a shelf. His briefcase beside him, an East Asian man in a neat grey jacket, is kneeling in front of them. His eyes flick across to other teddy bears in pale t-shirts beside them. He frowns. His brow furrows and he looks back and forth between them, tapping his cheek as he ponders. Sunlight streams through the shop window, illuminating the teddy bear's pale brown fur. Placing his hands on his knees, he straightens and reaches into his jacket pocket. Pulling out a coin, he shows one side to the t-shirt bears on his left and the other to the bow tie bears on his right. Tossing the coin in the air, he catches and covers it on the back of his hand. He checks which side it landed on and shows it to the bears on his left. The view remains fixed on a display of greetings cards behind him as he takes one of the t-shirt bears from the shelf and walks out of sight. He comes back and switches it for a bow tie bear. In a modern apartment, the man unrolls stripy wrapping paper on a kitchen table and places the chosen bow tie bear in the center. He puts down a pair of scissors in a silver dish and folds the paper over the gift. Water flows from a bath tap. The man lifts a silver safety razor to his clean shaven cheek touching a finger to his skin as he precisely shaves a small area. He sits in the bath, staring straight ahead. He slowly lies back. The man stands in front of a long mirror, fastens the top button of his pink shirt and smooths down the fabric. He changes his mind and undoes it again, forcing his mouth to practice a smile. The smile evaporates and he reaches for the button again. Parked up in a leafy suburban street of semi-detached houses, the man, now wearing a white shirt, quickly crosses to a concrete driveway. Clutching the gift-wrapped bear, he reaches for a doorbell. As his finger hovers over the black button, he sees a yellow post-it note which reads, 
Bell does not work. Please knock. His expression clouds. A younger man of East Asian heritage opens his front door and finds his doorstep empty. At the sound of the engine, he glances across the street. He tucks his hands in his pockets and continues to look over. In his car, the man looks up at his rearview mirror, sombre-faced. He glances down at the gift-wrapped bear beside him and returns his gaze to the mirror. He slowly looks away and puts his hand on the steering wheel. At home, a shallow dish holds a coin, a key, an upturned business card and two pale blue cufflinks in the shape of bald wool. He opens a mirrored wardrobe door and places the gift-wrapped bear on a high shelf, besides numerous other similarly wrapped parcels. As he closes the door, the shelf darkens to black, with only faint points of light glinting off the metallic ribbons. He looks at himself in the long mirror and averts his gaze as he slowly unbuttons his shirt. A calendar on the wall displays the month of April, 2022. The fifth is circled in red, with a note written above in Japanese. Now wearing burgundy silk pyjamas, the man is kneeling on his bed, turning over the pages of the following year's calendar. Turning it over to April, he picks up a red pen and circles a date. He nods climbs off the bed and walks away. The view remains static. Stacks of books teeter on the bedsides, along with a single framed photograph of someone too small to make out. Beneath Japanese script, the title appears, Bakemono. Written and directed by Tristan Nelson. Produced by Gavin Spores and Tristan Nelson. The man, Eiji Mahara. The son, Naruto Komatsu. Cinematographer, Loren Desportes. Casting director, Joe Marshall. Set designer, Annie Tinsley. Composer, Three Day Monk. Costume designer, Jacqueline Barker. Sound designer, Liam Cameron. Sounds from the unseen bathroom continue as other credits appear. Special thanks to Louise McGuinness Clark, Alex Stewart, Sophie Pryor, Charlotte Nelson, Liam Daisley, and Flora Stewart, and to our crowdfunders. Subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing by Stage Text. Audio description by Trish Hodson for Vocalize. Copyright Love Cabin 2023. All rights reserved. The man returns. As he gets into bed, he looks down at the framed photograph and turns off the light.